Today's a South Carolina Democratic primary, and I couldn't think of a more appropriate day to finally verbalize some comments regarding uh, the press or the, the coverage of the 2008 campaign, at least in the media uh, in general. And that is be wary. Um, yellow journalism has returned. And this is not sort of to say that everyone in the media is uh, ridiculous and absurd and exaggerating. Um, that would just be a silly and absurd, ridiculous statement. Um, obviously, there's a lot of good sources out there. I respect many people in the press. Uh, and I'm grateful for those sources for good information, accurate information, and information that is not charged with emotional language or information that is not relevant but would in some ways elicit some kind of feeling in uh, reader. Um, so for them, I'm grateful. But whether, but it's clear that the majority or at least a substantial influential strain in the press uh, has simply resorted to a, a problem we have, we've had before, and that's yellow journalism. Uh, if you look at the coverage at large, at least related to the 2008 election, I think this could be a critique uh, for the press coverage um, about everything, but I don't really follow other stuff enough to be able to say that with confidence. But I can say with confidence that the coverage regarding the 2008 election from the very beginning has been silly and absurd. And the suggestion or, or the notion that this is you know, the most important election in history, uh, whether or not you agree with that is a personal decision. Uh, I hate to tell people what sort of opinions to formulate, but I will say if the press actually thinks that this is the most important election in history, then they're doing an enormous disservice to every single one of the people that they're providing information for. And that's in large part, uh, not necessarily because they're not providing information, uh, although I do think that that's somewhat lacking, at least in the substance, but it's the way that they're framing the information that they're presenting. Uh, they, If you just follow the press coverage, you would almost believe that the presidential candidates are real-world contenders uh, or this is some kind of reality show. Um, and, and I actually really believe that if I took coverage of the election from you know all of the major networks, uh, I could actually put together a reality TV show that would look or go just like uh, any of the TV show, reality TV shows that are out there. Um, I mean... These silly sound bites and the bizarre and absurd topics uh, that they talk about sometimes, uh, it's just um, ridiculous. And specifically, this has become a major issue, at least in the last two weeks, or where I sort of became enormously frustrated with it, because the coverage has been intensely focused on uh, what the press has uh, described as the injection of race um, into the campaign. And they're, of course, targeting the Clintons, saying that they did this. Uh, that's a decision that I think everyone needs to make for themselves. I'm not going to really speak to that. Uh, but what I will speak to is uh, how, how someone who's at least followed the campaign very closely for the last year over at 2008central.net, uh, I've been blogging about it along with uh, uh, JW, who's also a co-managing editor at the site. And we've been following the election very closely. And for anyone that's been paying attention, I think that you can find that suggestion from the press that the Clintons have somehow now injected race into the campaign, uh, a laughable suggestion. Uh, not because I'm saying that the Clintons didn't do this. Um, again, that's a decision you need to make. But what I will say is that the way the press has framed this is um, silly. Uh, if you look back to the very beginning of the coverage, uh, the first questions that they started asking regarding the major candidates as they began to emerge was... Is the country ready for a black president? Is And once they sort of got done talking about that, uh, the next question was, uh, is Barack Obama black enough? Uh, and then, you know, they started looking at, well, is America ready for a woman president? And there were other questions regarding Mitt Romney. Is America ready for a Mormon president? But at the same time, chiding people for suggesting, for, for making suggestions that, you know, somehow there's this a re religious test and... Uh, but they sort of compelled through their coverage and through this consistent asking these questions, which I think sometimes are legitimate questions, but it's the way they're framing these questions that encourage divisiveness amongst voters, encourage the division that currently exists within both parties. I mean, and you, it would be wrong to suggest that the candidates themselves or the leaders and politicians themselves are solely responsible for the state of affairs that exist, at least politically speaking. Um, it's, it can't entirely be their fault because they rely on the press and we as a larger society rely on the press to frame and control the narrative and the discussions that exist 
within our society. I mean, that's how people have discourse. And so if you look at the election coverage, if you look at the way they're framing issues, it becomes very clear that it's just spun entirely out of control. And so really all I want to say, and we've been talking about this uh, periodically throughout the campaign, we always do these sort of reality check kind of things where we tell everyone to, you know, calm down. Uh, the press is just losing their minds. And, you know, here's sort of the, a more realistic or here's some more context for what's being discussed in the press. And, you know, we've done that. But, uh, you know, um, how significant is it really? Um, but what I think would be more significant is to at least stress one message, and that's be wary, be skeptical. Um, whether or not you're a Republican, a Democrat, a hardcore conservative, a, 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 a liberal, a, whatever issues you care about, um, even if what the press is saying is something that you would agree with, maybe entirely, uh, be wary. Be wary of the way it's being framed. Uh, because when you look at at least, you know, perfect example is the most recent debate in Florida. Um, the day or so leading up to it, I mean, the coverage was, or at least the, the statement was, do or die. I mean, that's how they framed this debate. Uh, the, suge the suggestion that a, a debate um, is do or die is just ridiculous. But when you keep saying it like that, uh, you add such intensity, such emotion to it, that you begin to detach everyone's emotions from their more rational uh, side that may be more inclined to discourse and compromise. And so what I will say is that demand more. Be wary. And especially, be wary especially when reports take facts and present them entirely from a conclusory perspective. Meaning, instead of saying, at least I'll give a more, re more circling back to the Clintons, Discussing what Bill did is one thing. Discussing what Bill did and the significance of it, meaning, well, this now means he injected race into the campaign, is a conclusion. Uh, and that's something that, obviously, people are going to have to make. It's very hard to separate the two. And that's not entirely what I'm criticizing them for. But it's the way that they frame these conclusions. It's the way they present these conclusions. And it's certainly the people that they have talking on television often uh, about, you know, either side of any issue. Uh, they tend to be more extreme. Um, and almost all the language, or a lot of the language, being used is emotionally charged. And when you use emotionally charged language, it's very difficult for people to find compromise and for people to really cut through the emotion, to cut through the feelings, and to actually get a hold of the issues and get a hold of what people are really saying and what the candidates are really about. Um, and so...